Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Don Pillsbury, KC1MPO, and he has a question about lightning protection uh, for his shack and where to put the protectors and grounding and so on. Um, in, I responded to uh, a question of his in the February issue of QST. He says, thanks for your cogent answer on this subject in the February issue of QST. I am setting up my station and will use the cable entrance panel box for my lightning protector. And I like the idea of running the ground wire without the forest of ground rods. Okay. The individual units of my station are bonded with one inch strap to a copper bar and then the power supply is grounded to the utility panel by the number 12 ground wire. I'd suggest thicker wire than that from uh, your ground. We'll get into that. My problem, the utility ground is a 55 foot three quarter inch copper pipe running through the front of the house four inches under the ground. The first eight feet is covered by concrete. I'm loath to run the six number six wire through the house to get to the ground at the panel, nor should you. My plan, using the protector and the ground rod, disconnect the LMR 400 from the radio when the radio is not in use. If the cable dead ends and the center insulator is not shorted out to the shield, then there is no conducting path and no incentive for a surge to conduct along the cable. Do you think this is wise? Before we jump into answering um, Don's question, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Tim Lee, who is a recent new patron of this channel. You too can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. And I hope you do. And thank you for the support. Okay, let's take a, lo a look at this. There's, there's a couple things. He says, um, the individual units of my station are bonded with one inch strap to a copper bar, and the power supply is grounded to the utility panel by the number 12 ground wire. Well, in a roundabout way, it's grounded to your uh, station ground too, because the way this thing works, if you take a power supply, you plug it into the wall. The third wire ground is the green wire ground. It is connected to the chassis of the power supply for safety protection purposes. And the output negative source or the ground source, the black wire at 12 volt DC is connected through to that. I've tried this on several power supplies and measured that and it's a straight through. I'd recommend going ahead if you can and grounding that power supply directly to your station ground also. Although it is grounded through uh, the, the radio itself. However, that cable's often fairly long. So I'd go ahead and put some sort of a, a direct cable in there. Now, um, my problem, my utility ground is uh, this utility, the electrical utility is 55 feet of copper pipe running from the front of the house four feet under the ground. The first eight feet is covered by concrete. This is an unusual grounding situation that I've not heard of before. I, I am not an electrician. I'm an electrical engineer, but I'm not an electrician. So uh, he says, I am loath to run the number six through the house to get to the ground at the panel. And you are correct. You should not provide any opportunity for lightning to get inside the house. Now, one thing I'm not hearing here is about the ground rod right outside your shack. You should have a ground rod right outside your shack that you take your number six wire or thicker or preferably strap from the ground in your station your ground rod is your central point ground. You should take that by via strap or something like that out to the ground rod outside and uh, clamping that firmly to your ground rod. 
And then the task becomes connecting that to your utility ground. It's called bonding. And that bonding wire should not go through the house. It should not go through the house. Now, if there's no outside wire in there, you can run it over to that. And then in the utility panel where it connects to ground, and if you need help, you can ask the electrical utility to do this for you. You shouldn't open that panel on your own uh, to connect that there. I would recommend running bare number six wire stranded underground, and that way it acts like a ground itself, the connecting wire, and then over to the utility ground. Now, you've got, uh, as I recall, a vertical. You've got a ground at the base of that. That's good. So your vertical comes down to a lightning arrestor at the foot of the tower and then runs under the ground next to your cable to the ground rod that is right outside your shack. And you've got another lightning arrestor there. That's the primary lightning arrestor is the one right there outside the ground. And then you bring your cables into the house, okay? Now, as far as disconnecting the LMR 400 from the radio, it says if the cable dead ends and the central conductor is not shorted out to the shield, then there is no conducting path and no incentive for a surge to conduct along the cable. That is all thrown out the window because of the voltages involved. The fact that there is a conductor there at all will want to conduct uh, lightning up through there. Believe me, we're talking hundreds of thousands of volts. That's going to arc through anything in a cable. Okay, So what you want to do is have that lightning arrestor right outside the house. And then the lightning has a path to ground that it will want to follow. Will that raise the voltage in your shack? Absolutely it will. But everything in your shack is bonded together. So they all go up in voltage at the same time and then down in voltage. And you don't have differential voltages between them that could cause electrical failures. That's the whole point of the grounding. The grounding does not make it zero volts. It keeps everything at the same voltage. So if there is a large current surge, they can rise and go down at the same time and keep practically no uh, voltage differential between them. Okay. Now, I do not hear you mention in here your ground rod right outside the station. Okay. And maybe it's there. Maybe I am missing something. But no, don't count on... Uh, the shield and stuff. LMR 400 is great cable, but it's not going to keep the center conductor and the shield from arcing over in a lightning event. Now, if you live in a lightning prone area like Tampa, Florida, I used to live in Tampa, Florida, and it seems we had lightning for breakfast. It was there all the time. And I remember one time a lightning bolt struck right outside the squadron, went down into the ground between the ditch and the road and blew out a telephone cable down there, just blew it to smithereens. And uh, they spent three or four days getting that cable patched up, ready to go. Uh, another humorous story, it was raining extremely hard right at closing time. And several of us were standing at the door waiting for the rain to let up before we dashed to our cars. And a lieutenant in the other squadron that was in there too, uh, first lieutenant, started to go out and says, I can't wait. And one of my sergeants yells at him about his rank. He says, how well does silver conduct? And everybody started laughing. And then there was this huge lightning crash about 20 feet away from us. And that <laughs> lieutenant turned around and came back. So apparently he was afraid lightning would conduct. Anyway, lightning does conduct quite a bit. Your primary ground rod is the one that's right outside your station. 
All cables should go through lightning protectors. I prefer the Alpha Delta brand simply because I'm, I've got several of them. I'm used to working with them. That's this lightning protector here. And this thing right here is your attachment to the ground rod. And then you put your cables there. And the lightning discharge tube is in here. And they can really protect your system. Now, in a direct strike, all bets are off. This is why uh, if you live in a lightning-prone area, which I was starting to say earlier, you want to keep your radio antennas disconnected um, from the rigs, except when you're using them, okay? Someplace like Tampa, parts of Texas, and so on, uh, where you get a lot of lightning. Okay, so I hope that helps you answer your question. Um, don't put any bonding cables in the house. You want to keep lightning out of the house, and that includes out of the basement, okay? Uh, lightning will tend to follow a conductor, so it will follow any conductor it can find into the house. That's why we have lightning surge protectors, and we ground everything right outside the house. So I hope that gives you some advice uh, that may uh, be able to help. Uh, so, Don, there you go. Now, I have just one more quickie here. This one is from Hal, uh, who doesn't give a call sign, uh, but he's obviously, he says, I'm a fully licensed radio amateur. Oh, here it is. Call Lima Alpha 4, Foxtrot Lima Alpha. Uh, but he's getting back into uh, digital modes, such as PSK31, FT8, FT8 is the popular one. WSJT, which is also popular, FT4, Olivia, MFSK, JT65, and Pactor. Um, so FT8 is going to be by far and away the most popular. He wants to operate portably. So he says, uh, do I need to have an internet uh, uh, connection to operate digital modes off-grid? such as soda, poda, etc., in order to operate these digital modes? The short answer is no. The long answer is no. Um, the only thing you're giving up is being able to do an instant signal report to PSK Reporter so they can keep track of that for propagation studies. So that does not affect your operation at all. So there you go. And there you have it. I hope you have a wonderful April. I am really ready for the snow to cease and us to get some decent weather. So until we next meet, 73.